So here I have two cups of water. We're going to bring the water to a boil. And here I've cut up one a small potato, peeled it and cut it up into cubes. And this is one carrot. I've peeled the carrot and cut it into cubes. Now once the water starts to boil, I'm going to add the carrots and the potato and we're just going to power boil it. That is just when it's just cooked. We don't want the uh, potatoes to be overcooked, but just, you know, rightly cooked. So it has still has a crunch. So now I'm going to add the cooked potatoes and carrots to a bowl. Next, I'm going to add one small capsicum that I've cut into very small cubes. Next goes in one small tomato. I've removed the pulp of the tomato and I've cut it up into small cubes. Next goes in one cubed cucumber. Now mix all of these ingredients well together. You could add French beans, corn, you know, the choice is yours. Now I'm going to add one teaspoon of pepper powder and some salt to taste. Mix everything really well together so that the salt and the pepper coats all of the other ingredients. Now I'm going to add three teaspoons of veg mayonnaise without any flavor in it and mix all of this well together. Now you could add the garlic mayonnaise or the other flavored ones if you like, but I prefer it to have the plain flavor without any other extra flavoring that really, you know, it really tastes nice without all the other extra flavoring. But the choice is yours, of course, and whatever you have at hand, you can use. So now mix all of this together well. So our filling is ready. Now I will leave a link to how to prepare pure veg canopies at home. I'll leave the recipe link down in the description box as well as the comment section. So I've already prepared the canopies in advance. And now all you have to do is just fill them with this filling. And one tip I like to give you here is keep the filling in the you know, refrigerator. And when you're ready to serve, only then put the filling into the canopies. The filling should be nice and chill. And that's it guys, your canopies are all ready. It's a lovely snack or a starter or just when you're hungry and want to have something light. So I hope you like today's short and sweet recipe. Don't forget to check out how to make homemade canopies which are pure veg at home. And uh, give this recipe a try and I'll catch you in my next video as soon as anything. This is Akshata signing off. Bye! today's lovely recipe so first I'm going to work on making the dough so for that I require we're going to need one cup of flour or maida half a cup of corn flour one fourth cup of clarified butter or ghee some salt to taste and water as needed to make a nice soft and firm dough so now I'm going to add both the flours that is the plain flour as well as the corn flour to a bowl Next, I'm going to add some salt to taste. I'm also going to add the ghee. And now with my fingers, I'm just going to rub the ghee in into the flour really well so that we get, you know, we coat each and every part of the flour with this ghee. So take your time with this. And just crumble it as you go and you should be able to hold it in a like this it should all come together like this you should be able to hold it like this and now we're going to add a little water at a time and make a nice firm dough now i used about uh, i think three or four 
tablespoons of water and once our dough is formed we're just going to add a few drops of ghee and again we're going to knead this dough really well so take your time with this about four to five minutes knead the dough because we want the dough to be really nice and elastic and easy to work with also the prawn puffs will come out really crispy and crunchy if you really knead the dough well and now you should just if you press your fingers into it you know you get this kind of a dent or a mark and now we're just going to uh, roll the dough up and keep it aside for at least 15 to 20 minutes minimum so while the dough is resting let's work on making the filling now for the filling we need the following ingredients here i have one uh, cup of fresh prawns which i've deveined washed this is one medium onion chopped fine one fourth cup of fresh coriander leaves chopped fine one green chili chopped fine this is about six to seven cloves of garlic chopped fine one inch of ginger chopped fine and two teaspoons of vinegar or you can substitute it with lemon juice This is one four teaspoon of turmeric powder or haldi powder, half a teaspoon of pepper powder or miri powder, and four to five fresh curry leaves that I've just chopped up fine. We also will be requiring a little salt to taste, and so now we can start making our filling. So now in a pan, I've heated about two teaspoons of oil. Once the oil is hot, I'm going to first add the ginger, the garlic, the green chili, and I'm going to sauté these three ingredients really well. Till the rawness of the ginger and the garlic goes away, and the garlic turns a little bit brown, we're going to sauté it. Then I'm going to add the onion. We're going to fry the onion also very well. So if you chop everything really nicely and finely, the filling really you know uh, comes to the perfect consistency. We don't want big big pieces of ginger, garlic, and onion because then when we are putting it into the dough. Uh, you know it does tend to uh, you know uh, cause a problem so better to cut it very fine so now i'm going to add the turmeric powder the pepper and the curry leaves and again saute everything really nicely for about 2 to 3 minutes till everything comes together really nicely now i'm going to add the prawns now if you want you can even chop the prawns up into smaller bits And now we're going to mix everything well. We want to fry the prawns and cook the prawns at this stage. So we'll fry the prawns really well. Now I'm using medium-sized prawns, so I've cut them up into halves. You can also use the smaller prawns. And now when the prawns are cooked, they will actually curl up a bit and turn to a denser or a thicker white color. From a transparent color, they turn to a you know. A thicker whitish color. So we're going to sauté all of this for two, three, two, two to three minutes. Now I'm just going to flavor it with some salt. Now I use Himalayan pink salt. It's uh, you know, it's good for health, and uh, it uh, is really nice to use. So I'm going to now uh, add the chopped up coriander. Mix everything really well together. turn off the heat after you add the coriander after you mix everything well and you can see that the filling has now reduced in size because everything has come together really well and now once the flame is turned off i'm going to add the vinegar or the lemon juice whatever you like to add you can add either vinegar or the le lemon juice so our filling is ready i'm just going to transfer it to a bowl and let it cool completely And now is the fun part. Once our mixture is nice and cool, all we have to do is make these beautiful prawn, uh, prawn puffs. So now I'm going to uh, make small balls out of the dough. Just roll them between the palm of your hands. This dough is so easy to work with. It's very elastic and really nice to work with. 
So now I've made balls again. I'm going to make them into halves as you'll see. Then I'm going to apply a little bit of oil onto my rolling surface. I'm not going to add any flour because then when you're frying it, the flour gets into the oil and becomes a big mess. So just apply a little bit of oil and then just roll it out into a small little circle. Just like what you would do with nuris or karanjis. And then I'm just going to pay, place a little bit of the fillings here, a teaspoon roughly. Don't overfill it and don't underfill it either. And then I'm just going to fold it over like this. Seal the edges by pressing it down. Then I'm just going to pick it up, press the, the edges. And then just seal them by making this particular pattern. Now I'm doing it this way because I find that, you know, the, uh, the puffs get really well sealed and there's no chance of the filling coming out. But otherwise you can also cut them like you would with a nyori or a karanji using a cutter. But I found that this was much better. So in this way I made all the puffs. And if you want to make more, you can always double or triple the quantity of all the ingredients. Depending on how many you want to make. And you can shape them in whatever way you want. And just for fun, the last one, I like to make it into this little ball or portly or pouch or whatever. I couldn't think of a name. If you can think of something, let me know in the comment section below. I couldn't think of a name, but it is so cute. And I didn't want to waste any of the dough. So I just uh, you know, made this small thing. And then now all we have to do is just deep fry them till they're nice and golden brown in color. Now, alternatively, you could bake these also. So for that, you'll have to preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius for about 10 minutes and then uh, put a baking paper onto the tray. Then just brush this with a little oil or butter or ghee and then bake them on both sides for about five to seven minutes on 180 degrees Celsius. That's it. But uh, somehow these fried ones are more crispier, more crunchier. And just fry them and then drain them off on some uh, kitchen napkin to drain off the excess oil. And that's it guys. These amazing prawn puffs are all ready. Now you can also make these and freeze them. I mean before frying them you can freeze them for about a week or so till you want to use them. Or put them in a vacuum bag and then fry them whenever needed. And our lovely go and prawn puffs are all ready. I can't wait to dig into them. Just dip them into some ketchup or any sauce of your choice. And this is how it is inside. The filling is nice and crispy, almost like a puff pastry. So make this guys and let me know. So friends, let's start with today's recipe. Now I've taken four large eggs and I've brought the, uh, you know, just boiled them in some water for about 15 minutes. So let them boil in this water for 15 minutes and then transfer them to a bowl which has got, you know, room temperature water. Let it sit in that for 15 minutes. Then when it's, uh, you know, it's in uh, like at room temperature and you can handle the eggs, then you just start peeling the eggs and keep them in a separate bowl because if the eggs are hot and you try to peel them then it you know it all the peel and the uh, the egg part also does come off so let it cool to room temperature then we're just going to cut them up into halves and we're just going to scoop out the yolks in a separate bowl So in this way, just cut the eggs up into half and take a spoon and the yolks will come out very, very easily. So these are hard boiled eggs. That is, you have to boil them in for 15 minutes and then let them sit in room temperature water for another 10 to 15 minutes. And once you're able to handle the eggs, only then start, you know, uh, shelling them or de-peeling or peeling them. That way, you know, the eggs won't break. 
etc. So now I'm going to take these yolks and I'm going to mash them up really, really well with the back of a spoon. Now I'm going to add some English mustard sauce to this, about a teaspoon. Next, I'm going to add one fourth cup of mayonnaise. Mash everything really, really well. It has to be a very, very smooth kind of paste. Now I'm going to add about a one fourth teaspoon of pepper powder. Then I'm going to add some salt to taste and again mix everything really well. So you have to have this very thick kind of a consistency for the of the paste. It shouldn't be too runny. And now I'm just going to add about three fourth of a teaspoon of Tabasco sauce. This really, uh, you know, brings out the flavor of all of the yolks and it just elevates the dish to another level. Now I'm just going to put this into a piping bag. You can use, you know, a spoon and just put it into the uh, whites of the egg. But otherwise, if you use a wiping bag, then it really, you know, you can make, I mean, it just goes into the right uh, place and it looks pretty too. And then just garnish it with some coriander. I had spring onions at home, so I just chopped them very fine. If you wanted a little spicy, you can just uh, sprinkle a little bit of red chili powder on top too. And that's it, friends. Your lovely egg starters are all ready. Try out this dish, friends. It's really, really simple and very, very tasty. Let's go through the ingredients. There are really few and uh, some things that we really have in our kitchen or our pantries. So now here I have 250 grams of chicken mince. These are two medium sized onions that I've chopped really, really fine. Four to five green chilies chopped fine. Now you can adjust this according to how spicy uh, you know you'd like the koftas. Ten cloves of garlic chopped fine. This is about one fourth cup of fresh coriander chopped fine. One egg. Now this is the juice of one lemon, so roughly about two tablespoons of lemon juice. This is one cup of breadcrumbs. Two teaspoons of pepper powder. And our last ingredient, which is also very important, is salt to taste. So now that we have our ingredients sorted, let's just get started. So first I'm going to add the onions to the mince. Now you can see that I have all my ingredients just ready. So this is would be a good tip to, you know, keep all your ingredients ready. Next goes in the garlic, the green chilies. Now I would suggest that you go a little on the spicier side because then it really brings out the taste. Of course, if you're not uh, used to spice, then you can cut down on the spiciness. Next goes in the pepper powder. The coriander leaves. Now, one tip is that everything really needs to be chopped very fine. So take your time with the ingredients. Now some salt to taste. Now I'm going to just beat the egg up and add that and the lemon juice. So I'm going to mix all of these ingredients well together. Now you can see that I've not added the breadcrumbs yet. And now I'm going to add the breadcrumbs. Now here I'm mixing it with a spoon, but I prefer, you know, mixing it with my hand because then I come to know, okay, the, how much breadcrumbs are, you, uh, are needed because we want a firm and stiff kind of a mixture. So now our mixture is ready. So we're just going to make very small koftas or small balls and set them aside. So make them very small, don't they? Make them very big. Now 
and now would be a good time to keep a uh, you know just about a little bit of oil for heating so I'm just going to be using about four tablespoons of oil I don't want to deep fry this but I would like to you know just uh, shallow fry them you could deep fry them too so I'm just using about four tablespoons of oil and I'm just going to put the koftas in and I'm going to fry them on a low to medium heat till they are nicely evenly cooked keep your flame from low to medium and then just keep tossing the uh, koftas around till they are nice and golden brown keep an eye on them so that they don't get burned don't increase the flame to very high because then only the outside will be cooked and the inside will be raw so cook it evenly on a low to medium heat you have to try out these koftas if you haven't already you can have them all by themselves like a starter or you can have them with some pulao the choices are endless and now you can see that they are all nice and golden brown in color and what I like to do is I like to drain them on a steel sieve like this not on a kitchen napkins because that way they remain nice and crispy if you put them on the kitchen napkins they do become a little soggy and that's it guys delicious koftas are all ready to enjoy So friends, don't forget to give this video a big like. Don't forget to subscribe to Akshata's recipes by hitting the red subscribe button that you see. Let's see today's puff pastry recipe for the chicken puffs. Now here I've taken about one and a half cup of all-purpose flour or maida, a pinch of salt, about two tablespoons of clarified butter or ghee and about one fourth cup of water. Now I'm going to take the flour and to that I'm going to be adding the clarified butter or the ghee and I'm going to crumble it up till it resembles some bread crumbs. So ensure that all of the ghee coats the maida or the all-purpose flour really well. I've also added the salt to taste. Now I'm going to add a little water at a time.
and we are going to knead this to a very stiff dough. So just about one fourth cup of water will do. And then just knead this dough for about two to three minutes till it's nice and smooth. And then we're just going to keep it aside for at least 30 minutes. Now I'm go I've taken about half a cup of corn flour and one fourth cup of clarified butter or ghee and I'm just going to mix the two of them well together to get a very thick and smooth paste. Now our dough has been sitting for half an hour. I'm just going to divide it into six equal pieces and just roll them and keep them aside. Then I'm going to dust my surface and I'm going to roll out one of the pieces or the balls of the dough keep it aside then roll a second one then I'm going to apply this corn flour and ghee paste all over the second uh, rolled out dough and I'm going to place the first one on it and keep the two aside I'm going to repeat this procedure in this way so I'm going to apply the dough the paste to the one I rolled out and then I'm going to pick up the one which is aside the two layers and place it on this one and then just roll it and keep it aside so in this way I'm going to do it with all the rest of the six parts now when everything is done I'm going to roll it out and then I'm going to apply the remaining paste and then I'm just going to fold it in this manner roll it out like this as thin as possible and then just fold it in this manner and then keep it aside for about 10 to 15 minutes you can refrigerate it also for 10 to 15 minutes now let's prepare the filling for this chicken puff now I had boiled about a cup of chicken I'm just going to shred it once it is cooled down so I boiled it for about five minutes in some water now I've taken a pan and that I've added one tablespoon of butter to that one tablespoon of maida then I'm going to add a cup of milk and I'm going to make a smooth uh, paste so this is a kind of a white sauce then I'm going to flavor it with some salt and about a teaspoon of black pepper powder and to this I'm going to add my boiled and shredded chicken and mix everything well together Now I'm going to transfer this mixture to a bowl and I'm going to refrigerate this for about 10 to 15 minutes. Now after our puff pastry has sat for about 20 minutes aside as well as the filling, we're ready to make our chicken puffs. So I'm going to roll the dough as thin as possible to about just an inch of thickness and then I'm going to take a vati and I'm going to cut some round circles like this. And then I'm going to take these uh, molds, just butter them a bit. And then I'm going to put these rounds and press them so that we get this lovely shape of the mold. Now this dough is very elastic and very easy to work with. Now when you're making these circles, ensure that one is for the mold and one is for the covering. Now I'm just going to fill in these with the uh, filling that we made of the chicken and then we're just going to cover it up with the other part like this and seal it up well just remove any extra and you can keep that aside we can use it for the remaining chicken puffs and once you've done that just take a knife and just make a crisscross like this in the center so this is what I'm going to do with all the rest of them. Now this is a good time to preheat your oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. Put them on a tray and I'm just going to brush them with a 
with a beaten one beaten egg i'm going to use the entire egg the white as well as the yolk i've just beaten it up and i've just used a silicone brush and i've just brushed the top of it and now i'm just going to put it into my preheated oven and i'm going to bake it at 180 degrees celsius for about 20 minutes now each oven is different so just keep an eye on it and then you'll see that you get these beautiful golden brown chicken puffs all ready so you can get the tray out and let them cool completely before we are going before we demold them so let them be out for about 10 to 15 minutes till they completely cool and you can actually demold them and handle them uh, easily and now i can easily demold them after they've completely cooled down and you can see that even the base has nicely baked and it comes out of the mold so easily because we had buttered the mold and because they're really baked very very well so in this way i've made my lovely chicken puffs you can fill in any filling of your choice you can go with a different type of chicken recipe you can even add some mushroom uh, recipe you can use vegetables you can do anything uh, of your choice and make these lovely uh, puffs